Welcome everyone. I'm going to install the Nano server on a Windows 2025 server. And how I got to this page was just doing a Google search for Nano Server Image Builder that you see here. Now, once you get the Nano Server Image Builder, you can just go ahead and download it. And after it's downloaded, we'll start the installation. Now, during the installation, it's going to prompt you to also download the ADK as well as install some of those uh, particular features and we'll take a look at that as we go along so the nano image can only be used as a virtual machine now we used to be able to install it onto a regular server but no more it, ha it has to be a virtual machine so you have to have hyper-v installed or some other type of virtual machine software i'm using hyper-v in this case i'm going to choose the default location for the installation and choose install now, it can take some time to do this install, depending on the resources that you have on your server. But I'm going to click Finish, and then I'm going to click Start, and I'm going to choose the Nano Server Image Builder. Now, here's where you're going to get that message. So it's going to want Windows PE as well as downloading the ADK. So when I click OK, it's going to automatically open up this download to go to the ADK. So there's my ADK.exe. And I'll click to open that file. And here you can see it's going to show the path where it's going to do the installation. So I'm just going to choose the defaults, except for I don't want to participate. Click Next and Accept. Now you can choose the defaults that you see here, or you can just uncheck what you don't need. It doesn't really use up that much space. I'm just going to leave it as it is. It, you can see it's going to use about 4 gigabytes. The ADK is the Assessment and Deployment Kit, and it contains a lot of different tools for creating various different types of Windows images. And in this case, it's going to help us create a virtual machine image for Nano Server. Nano Server is going to be something that uses very little resources. It has a very small footprint. It's very difficult to hack into. And it can be used for lots of different things, which I'll show you here shortly. And the Assessment Kit has been installed. So now I'm going to go to the Start menu, and I'm going to choose All Apps. And what I'm looking for is the Nano Server Image Builder. So we don't have to do anything with the Assessment Kit because it's going to automatically just be used when we utilize the image or bootable USB creator. Now, first thing what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a folder for this. And I'll create a new folder, and I'll call it VMs. And inside that, I'm going to create a folder for the Nano. And I'll go ahead and copy that location. And now I want to choose to create the Nano server image. Now, it's looking for a Windows Server media source. According to this, it's looking for Windows Server 2016. Even though this is the latest version, it's looking for a 2016 operating system. So you need to download the 2016 operating system either from Microsoft's Evaluation Center for free, or if you happen to have a 2016, you can use that. I've got one on the network, so I've gone ahead and browsed to that 2016 file. And I'll choose to accept and agree to the terms, click Next. Now I need to choose where I want to put that file. So I'm going to choose Browse, and I'm going to browse to that new folder that I just created. And this is where I want that output of the VHDX file to be. So I'll go to VMs and the Nano VM, and I'll give it a name of Nano1. It's going to add it as a VHD or VHDX file. VHDX is a little newer has a little bit more features to it, and I'm going to choose the defaults for the rest of this. Click Next, Next, and here's where those optional packages come in. So these are the roles and features that you would normally see when you go to Add Roles and Features, and you can choose whatever's in this list. Now, it's not going to be as complete a list as if you're using the standard or data center edition of, say, the Windows Server operating system, but it does give you a pretty good amount of different packages that you can install. And here are all the different options. 
A real popular one for nano server is to install the web server so you can get IIS installed, but you have some of these other options that you see here as well. Another really popular option is going to be containers, which are going to be self-contained applications as needed. So I'm going to choose just to leave those blank just to make this go a little quicker. It does take a while to install those options. Now, if you need any specific device drivers for anything you're adding, you can add those here by clicking the Add button. I don't, so I'll click Next. Now you want to put in the name of the computer. So I'll call it Nano1, and then I'll put in the administrator password. Keep in mind that your number keys may not work. You may have to just type the numbers above the letters on your keyboard. You can join the domain if you'd like. I do not have a domain to join here. And you can also add in other things like a virtual LAN or a VLAN, if you'd like, as well as static IP information. Now you want to choose if you want to add in the advanced settings or just create a basic server image. So the advanced image is going to include things like kernel debugging, things that I don't really need. So I'm just going to choose the standard one and click Create. And this usually takes about 10 minutes to create based on the speed of your computer and the resources you have available. Once it's done, we can add this as a virtual machine in Hyper-V. The image file has been created. You can see the VHDX file here, and you can see inside here basic log files and other information that you might need at some point. So I'm going to go into Hyper-V and right-click and choose to create a new virtual machine. So my wizard shows up, and I'll give this the name of Nano1, but you can call it whatever you'd like. Now I'm going to leave the store the virtual machine in a different location blank for now. We're going to choose a Generation 2 virtual machine. You can choose the RAM amount that you'd like based on your resources. And I'm going to choose my network card so it can connect to the Internet. Click Next, and now you want to change the option here to create a virtual hard disk to use an existing one. So I'm going to Browse, and I'm going to paste in the location of my file, and there's my Nano VHDX file. So I'll go ahead and choose that. Next, and Finish. So now it's creating the virtual machine using the file that I've already created earlier. And this is a bootable operating system file. So I can go ahead and connect to it, and I'm going to choose to start it up. Once the virtual machine starts up, you can do things like make changes to the IP address, and if you installed any optional roles and features, you can go ahead and configure those as well. I'm not going to get into that in this particular video, but this shows you how to create a nano virtual machine on my Windows Server 2025. I'm going to log in quickly just so you can see what it looks like once I log in. I don't have a domain, so I can just press enter and it's going to log me in. And there it is. And you can see, since I didn't install any options, I don't really have a lot of different things that I can do here, but I can choose networking, for instance. I don't have DHCP turned on, so it's just showing up an automatic private IP address, but you do get the idea. And that's how you install a Windows Nano virtual machine in Hyper-V.